All right, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to um, do some basic uh, deep learning with TensorFlow in R. So here I'm clicking on this classification tutorial. And here I'm just going to type this code in my R Emacs window. So here I'm opening it up in R. I'm going to type library Keras. That works fine. If you didn't have that installed already, you might need to do an install packages Keras to get that. That would give you something that looks like this. So here it says that it's in use and will not be installed, but you might need to do that if you don't have it already. And so yeah, let's load this MNIST data set. It's downloading an MNIST data set, I think. And here, I'm, let's take a look at what this object is in R. So it's a named list. The first thing is a train data set, which is an array with 60,000 items in the first dimension, 28 items in the second dimension, and 28 items in the third dimension. So I guess this is the height. This is the width, and this is the number of observations. So the MNIST data set, it's a data set of images. So it's 28 pixels high, 28 pixels wide, and there's 60,000 images in the train set. In the test set, it looks like there's 10,000 images. So the first thing that they do is they suggest normalizing the data, because I guess here if we look at MNIST train x, right, because here we were just looking at the x values, but the y values, here this is a one-dimensional array, and here if we look at the train x values, if we use, say, a uh, range, you know, see that these are values between 0 and 255, grayscale uh, integer pixel intensity values. So typically to normalize uh, for doing machine learning, you first have to normalize these, these values between 0 and 1. One way to do that is just to divide by 255 in this case. So here, let's do that. Here, I'll do the same thing for the test data, like they show in their example. Now let's define the Keras model using the sequential API. So let's do this. Now, here let's go to a new uh, to an R script so we can save this. Here, what they do is uh, they, in this R code, they define a Keras model sequential here. And then they're kind of repeatedly modifying this model. This is what this um, percent greater than percent um, thing is. It's kind of like a pipe operator. And the idea is that, OK, first we're going to initialize a model, then we're going to flatten the model from a 28 by 28 matrix to a flat vector. And we're going to use a dense neural network with 128 units and a relative activation function. Then we have a dropout um, layer. And then we have another dense layer with a soft max act activation function. So let's do that. Here, I'm going to take a look at this thing. What does this model object look like? Well, so it shows you that it's a sequential model, just like we defined there. Uh, we 
which means that here it's got a sequence of layers. The first layer is a flattened layer, no parameters. The second layer is a dense layer with 128 units. So that the number of parameters here is the number of <clears throat> weights that we have to learn to get from this input size, which is 28 by 28, to the output size, which is 128. So 28 by 28 is 784. So we should have that many units. Uh, so it's not quite. So I think, so that, that would be the number of weights. If we had one weight for every input, unit and output unit only but also you would typically have a bias term so that there's another weight for every um, for every output unit that, that does not depend on any input units so typically it's going to be something like this or is that right that's the other way around Right, so here it should be 28 plus 28 plus 1. So five, yeah, that's right. So for every input unit, there is a weight, and then there's an extra weight for the bias. That's right. So that's how we get that, that number here. The dropout layer, well, that's uh, just going to instruct uh, several um, several units to drop out. That's a regularization method that we'll talk about later. And finally, then there's going to be a dense layer with 10 units. <clears throat> and um, so here we have uh, 1,290 parameters to learn. And um, <clears throat> with this one, it's um, this is again, you know, one one unit for every input in the previous layer, and then uh, one extra unit, and then times the number of um, output units here. Anyway, so next thing that we do is, um, so this is what we were just looking at, and next step after building models to compile it. And so we define what loss and what optimizer to use. So here, let's just copy the code and use the same ones that they suggest. So here, model compile loss optimizer metrics. So does that actually change anything? OK, compile and fit, which we're going to see next. Modify the model object in place, unlike most of our functions. Okay. And so then we have, um, let's fit our model. So here, then we're going to fit on the train data. And let's see what that looks like. on 42,000 samples, validate on 1,800 samples, 18,000 samples. And here we just did five epochs of gradient descent. You can see the default printout um, here. The, when you specify a validation split equals 0 0.3, we're doing a single validation, uh, a sub-trained validation split into 70% um, train and 30% validation, I think. The verbose equals two means to actually print some stuff out while we're doing the training, like this, this message is here. And so what we see is that um, we have the accuracy, which starts out at around 90% on the train set, and it goes up to about 97%. Loss starts out at 0 0.33 goes down to about 0 0.08. So that's OK, but what we're really concerned about is what happens on, on held out data. And so the, to choose the regularization, we have to use this validation set. We have to monitor, monitor the validation accuracy. So here, 
it looks like the validation loss is also continuing to go down the whole time. So we haven't started over fitting yet. Same thing for the accuracy. It keeps going up. So again, it looks like we're not overfitting yet. We can now make predictions with our model using the predict function. So let's try that. So here is we have this train, this fit model object called model as the first argument. And the second argument is this array of test observations. And so here, if we do that, uh, we're going to get a whole vector of predictions, I think. And here, uh, actually, so it's a whole matrix of predictions. And so here, when you do head predictions to it means show me the first two rows of this thing. And so what this is, it's the probability for the first two test samples. The first, these are the two rows here of each of the 10 different classes. So um, after that, um, I guess we can assess the model performance on a different data set using the evaluate function. So before we do that, let's just do a reality check. So looking at mnist test y, um, so we see the first one is um, a 7, a digit of a 7, midget of a 7. The second one is a 2. So, you know, if we did it right, we sh if our model is working, we should see a high probability for the seventh class, um, so maybe to visualize this better, we can we can say prediction call names predictions gets zero to nine because I think that's what the predictions are. So let's do that head again now. So then we can see that for the first observation, it looks like there's quite a large probability here on the 7, right? So here, 9.9 .9 times 10 to the negative 1, that's almost 99%. We're 99% confident, ascending probability of 99% uh, to 7 class, so we're doing a good job on that example. And for the, the second one, we say it was a 2, so again, let's look through these numbers. On the second one, low probability for 0 and 1, and here we have about 99 probability for, for 2. So actually, we're doing a pretty good, good job on these predictions for these first two examples. So now we can assess the model performance on a different data set using the evaluate function. So let's try that. Model evaluate. And so here, what it does is we provide the inputs and the outputs, and it tells us what is the loss and what is the accuracy, the two, um, the two uh, metrics that we wanted to um, look at. So actually, that was specified in the compile uh, call here. The loss, this is actually what, what we optimize on the train step. The metrics, this is what we compute at the end of every epoch. And here at the end of um, at the end of training on the test set, and so here it says that we've got ninety seven point five percent accuracy on the test set, which is pretty good. Okay, slightly different results from what they show here, but that's to be expected because it's a stochastic gradient method. So. Um, so if you wanted to save the model, you could follow uh, and reload the model, you could follow these steps, but I think this is a pretty uh, good place to stop. Thanks for listening to this basic tutorial, and I hope you learned a little bit about how you can use Keras and package in R. Thanks.